Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 16 to 20 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2017. If you're preparing for the Junior Maths Challenge, also take my free online course, uh, Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge. In that course, you can practice real questions from recent Junior Maths Challenge papers. Every question has a video hint as well as a full video solution, and there are no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. Uh, sign up in the link below, no payment details required or, not, or anything like that, totally free of charge, so have a look at that now. There is also an upgrade course called Go for Gold in Math Challenges, and in that course you can learn about all of the techniques you need for the Math Challenges and practice on loads of original practice problems that I've made up there as well. But you can have a go at the free course first, it's a big course and it's very substantial and it'll really help you prepare uh, for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I really hope that I'll see you over there. Right, it says in New Threeland we've got 2p coins, 5p coins and one other type of coin and it's possible to make 13p out of just 3 coins uh, and it's also possible to make 19p out of just uh, 3 coins. Uh, so I could think about the possibilities here, right, so if I'm going to make 13 P, um, it can't be just three of the new coins because it's not divisible by three. One of the answers, all the answers here are whole numbers. Um, but I could have like a two and a two, a five and a five, or a two and a five, and then one of the new coins. I suppose I could also possibly have a two and two of the new coins, or a, and a five and two of the new coins. But these would be all the possibilities. So um, in these different cases, in this one that it would have to be 9 as the new coin, this one it would be 3, this one it would be 6, here it would have to be half of 11 so that can't work, here because uh, it would be not a whole number, and um, here I'd have 8 left over so it could be 4, so I can actually also obviously discount answers here that are not possible answers um, to the uh, in the question here so it's not 3. Um, right, I can also make 19p in the same way. So uh, if I just change the change the target to 19 with each of the same possibilities, right? So 2, 2, uh, and 15, uh, 5, 5, and 9. Ah, right. Now actually at this point I could stop because I found a coin that makes both of these work. So if this question has an answer, it must be a D, 9P. Um, for completeness, you might want to just check the other cases um, to make sure you haven't made a mistake perhaps. So here it would have to be 12. Um, if it was two and two others, again, not a whole number, so it's not going to work. And five uh, and two others would be uh, seven. Um, so five plus 14 gives me 19. So that's the only way of doing it. And the answer is D9. But as I say here, because it's a maths challenge question, if you find one way for it to work, um, then uh, you don't have to carry on because you know they've designed the question, so there's only one answer. Okay, so I'm going to add up all the even numbers between 1 and 101 and then subtract all of the odd numbers uh, between 0 and 100. And uh, so, you know, if you actually worked out those totals and subtracted them, this would be quite a hard question. Uh, let's think about what's going on in a slightly better way then, right? So just imagine I've got all of these numbers, right, 98, 99, 100. So I'm going to look at the odd numbers, and then, uh, and, but they're going to be subtracted from the even numbers. Okay, so if I look at them in pairs, right, in the total, like in my total, I'm going to be doing like 2 plus 4 plus 6, but then I'm going to be doing minus 1 plus 3 plus 5, right? It's going to be 2 plus 4 plus 6 all the way up to 100. But I'm, then I'm going to subtract 1 plus 3 plus 5 all the way up to 99, right? So you can think of it like I'm going to be doing 2 minus 1, and then I'm going to be doing 4 minus 3, and I'm going to be doing 6 minus 5, and, and adding all of those together, right? If I look at this sort of in columns instead, right? 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, 6 minus 5 is 1, and so if I keep doing that, I'm going to be adding together all of these pairs of num you know, all of these uh, ones. How many pairs of numbers are there between 1 and 100? Well, there are 50, so my last pair is going to be also 100 minus 99, which is 1. So I'm just going to end up with 50 lots of 1, and so the answer is B, 50. Okay, so we're going to fill in this cross number. Along the right here, we've got to have a cube number, uh, down here we've got to have a square number, so it's a three-digit cube number, a two-digit square number, and a power of 11 uh, that's five digits. Um, so you might think the power of 11 is the hardest place to start here, but actually in some ways um, it's the easiest because there's only one five-digit power of 11, right? 11 
uh, squared is 121. And then if I do 121 times 11, uh, I get 1331. If I do 1331 uh, times 11, um, I get 14641. And if I do 14641 times 11, I get something that's bigger than five. That's bigger than five digits. So actually, I know this must be 14641. Um, now, that is. Uh, now I did the I did the calculations quickly here as well, by the way, because I know that um, the powers of 11 also appear here in Pascal's triangle, and I just remember what they are. So have a look up Pascal's triangle if you don't know what that is. And on my on my Mathsaurus uh, YouTube channel, I've actually got a video that tells you why the powers of 11 um, appear in Pascal's triangle uh, like this. In Pascal's triangle, you just, um, to get like this number here, you add together the one above to the left and above to the right. Anyway, that's not what this question is about, but you can go and look that up if you're, if you're interested. Okay, that's Pascal's triangle. Anyway, um, let's not get distracted from this question. So I've got a square number now that's two digits um, that ends in a four. Well, the two digit square numbers, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. So it can only be 64 now. And uh, now I've actually got, now one across is a cube. Uh, so I need just a three digit cube that ends in six. Uh, so, you know, five cubed is 125, six cubed is 216 and I don't have to uh, check any further then. Again, a maths challenge question, there can only be one answer, so it must be the case that no other three digit cubes work here. I mean, you can check if you want. Seven cubed is 343, uh, eight cubed is uh, 512, and uh, nine cubed is uh, 729, and anything bigger is more than three digits. So, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you don't, you know, actually having memorized the square numbers up to uh, you know, up to 10 or 20 squared and the cube numbers up to 10 cubed can be useful in challenge, in, cha in maths challenges. Right, the um, answer to this question, anyway, um, 2 plus 1 plus 6 uh, plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1, so that's uh, 9, 10, 21, 25, and so the answer is 25. Oh, and I just realised I didn't put the answers on the screen here actually. Um, so uh, here are the here are, here are the options. Um, anyway, uh, 25 is one of the options here, and so the answer is A. So this question is not too bad if you know your interior and exterior angles stuff, but you do have to not get distracted and sort of you know the answer. Yeah, the, the, the question asks here for angle TVU, which is this one that looks a bit hard to work out. Um, so I can't really go directly at that. The only, but the things I know here, you know, I'm drawn immediately to this point here when I look at this question. Right, we know that in, in, in a square here, we're going to have right angles and we know that we've got a 60 degree angle in an equilateral triangle. So the only other one we might want to think about a little bit is what we get inside a hexagon. Um, so you know the exterior angle for a hexa, a, a, in a regular hexagon here is uh, 360 over 6 which is 60 and then angles on a straight line add up to 120 so the interior angle is 120 right so so this one's also 120 right so that means that this angle in here VUT is 360 minus 120 minus 60 minus 90 which is 90 degrees and then you then you look at that and you think ah right that's why this question's not as bad as it looks because this angle is actually a right angle 90 degrees and that means that this is a uh, a, a right angled triangle and uh, actually also and then we look at this as well and we say it's um, regular it's an equilateral triangle uh, a regular quadrilateral regular hexagon so it actually means okay equilateral triangle so all these sides are the same length but then in the square well all of its sides are the same length so they must also all be the same length as this and it's a regular hexagon um, so they must all be the same length as well actually okay so it's not actually really that it's 90 degrees that makes it easy sorry it's the fact that it's uh, we can see that this triangle is actually an isosceles triangle right because two of its sides have the same length this one has a 90 degree length and then the other two uh, must be equal so I do 180 minus 90 to get 90 and then divide it by two uh, to get what each of the other two are and we see that they must each be 45 degrees and that's the one that we were looking for so the answer is A, 
45 degrees. So in this question, it says the range is 20 of these list of integers, and the median is 17, and I want to know what the smallest possible number of integers in the list is. So I'm going to start with the smallest possibility here, 1, and keep working up, and, and, and I'll realise whether they're possible or impossible. So a list of one integer, right, so that would just be a number, right, maybe it is 17 or something, right, so the median would be 17, but it doesn't have a range of 20, because the range is the largest number minus the smallest number, so here the range would be 0. So we can't do it with 1. Can I do it with two numbers? Right, so with two numbers, how do I work out the median? Right, if, I, if my numbers were like 3 and 10, there is no middle value, so the median is the uh, average of those, right? So it would be 3 plus 10 over 2. So here, I would need numbers that are, so we've got 17 as the median. One would, the two numbers would have to be the same amount bigger than 17 and smaller than 17, right? So you could think of them as that they'd have to be 17 plus x, and 17 minus x, and then they'd have a median of 17. Now for the range to be 20, the difference between these two must be uh, must be 20. So, you know, I'm adding on a certain amount and subtracting a certain amount, and the total distance, right, if I think of this as a number line, I've got 17, and to get to 17 plus x, to get to 17 minus x, the distance is x on each side. So for the range to be 20, I would need 2x here to be 20, so I could have x, 2x equals 20, so I could have x equals 10. So actually it does work here, I can do 17 minus x is 7, 17 plus x is 17, and there's my list of two numbers which have uh, a range of 20 and a median of 17. So the answer here is b2, and we don't need to consider anything else because that's the smallest possible number of integers in the list. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well. But there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.